speak something. The other day, I was about to address the nation of Zambia. I promised you that I was coming live and I couldn't come live. And many people came and said, Ah, see a one, you have disappointed us. I know that that night people waited. And I know that so many people we are disappointed. People we are disappointed in hundreds of thousands, in millions. Everybody was waiting. Everybody wanted to hear me speak, as I promised. But at the end of the day, I didn't speak. You know what happened? People say, ah, see a one was a bribe. See a one was giving money to keep quiet. See a one was paid to keep quiet. <laughs> I was laughing. The reason why I was laughing is because I am a soldier that knows how to shoot. Check my track record. I have never lost a battle in my life. Check my track record. Check whether the ones I fought with government, the government of Guyana, the one I fought with the government of Zambia, the, the individuals that I fought, I want you to check, go through them and tell me any one of them where I failed. I, I never failed and I've never failed and I can never fail. So that's why the reason why I don't fail is because I take time. I don't just start vomiting. I don't just come and start talking. Hey, hey, this, hey, that, hey, this, hey, that. No, before I strike, I take time. And I prepare myself and I do all my work knowing that once we start, we have started. So look at this. That night, what happened? I decided to keep quiet because of one thing. Whatever I do is for the people. It's not about me. Anything you see me do is for the love of the people, not for me. Including the ministry. Including anything. What's anything you see me doing, I don't do it for myself. I do it for the people. And once the people are suffering, once the people are crying, I don't feel good. I feel very, very bad. Why did I not proceed with that live broadcast? It was simple. It was just one thing that happened. Number one. If I come to you and tell you that, okay, HH has failed, who are we going to replace HH with? There is, we, we must follow this very, very well. Who are we going to replace HH with? Is the next president coming from PF? Who is he? Is the next president coming from SP? Is this press coming from DA or what or, or what was who are we going to I don't want to be like those people that tell you ah that one is a false prophet it's see one is a false prophet but they cannot point you to the real prophet when I come to you and tell you that this one is not good I must present you with an option I don't want to create problems and there is no option just like people who rise up and say, ah, that one is a false prophet, don't go there. But they cannot point you to the real prophet where to go. I don't want to do that. I am a very, very intelligent human being that when I tell you to say, this is not good, let us go with this. Just like I came and told you to say, Edi Galungu is not good, let us go to HH. I presented the person to you so if HH must go, I, we must also have a replacement. And this is where my problem with PF came. This is where my problem with Edgar Lungu came in now. Edgar Lungu lost election in 2021. We just had a little bit of network problem. I hope it will not happen again. So, Edgar Lungu lost election in 2021. And after he lost election, for the first time in the history of Zambia, a, a political party that lost election was still intact. People were not leaving the party. The party was actually growing. What they needed was a way forward. They needed a leader. 
They needed somebody that could lead them. Edgar Lungu held onto power. He wanted to come back and be the president. Now, this is where African leaders fail. This is where they make mistake. There is what is called a president and a godfather to the president. Every powerful person on earth has a godfather. I see a one that is speaking to you here now. I have a godfather. Everyone that is doing well on earth, big, has a godfather. You can never be greater than your godfather. Whether you like it or not, you can never be greater than your godfather. You will always respect your godfather. What Edgar Lungu was going to do to the PF was to play a role of a godfather. This is very simple. It's just that we, we allow our emotions sometimes to take better part of us. If not, you have lost election. You have seen that your party is still intact. Your party is still powerful. Almost all the people that served as ministers in your party are still with you. You are supposed to live and allow a convention. In that convention, you have already secretly anointed the person that will take over. As a godfather. That is where he made the mistake. And this is where this is one of the reasons why I couldn't do that broadcast. Because I cannot say, let's let's support this candidate. Let's support that candidate. When I know that they are not going anywhere. Edgar Lungu is not coming back to rule Zambia. You cannot you can just mark it somewhere. It is not coming back to rule Zambia. But there is a way he could come back and rule Zambia. Very simple. Is anointing a political son and being a godfather. For example, he picks Mundibil and said, we are going to convention. You are going to be the next president of Zambia. I am your political father. I am going to guide you to tell you what to do. Remember, he already had over 1.8 1, 1 million people that voted for him. 1.8 people that voted for him. They were intact. In fact, they are intact. They voted for him no matter everything that we did against him. He still had 1.3 people, 1.8 people that believed him. Anyone he anoints automatically has 1.8 million votes. That one is not even negotiable. Now, during the campaign, when we were campaigning for HH, there are a lot of promises that we made for people, which many of them were not fulfilled. Out of 2.8 million people that voted for us as UPND, how many people are disappointed? I'm not even going far. I'm not even talking about the population of Zambia. I'm talking even from UPND themselves, the food soldiers, the cadres. How many of them are happy today? How many of them are disappointed? So you can see that that 2.8 million already is not 2.8 million. Why this guy is having 1.8 million? Are you following what you're saying? The problem, instead of doing the right thing, you go and consult Sunday Sinyangwe. Who is Sunday Sinyangwe? A fool that don't, a fool that his church is like a, a, a person that don't have up to 100 people in his church. He's failing to mobilize his church. A church that he has held for more than 20 years and he has not achieved anything in his church. He's a person that a, a former president went to consult. We, what does Sunday Sinyangwe know? He cannot help himself. He cannot help his family. Then Edgar Galungu go to him and he's telling Edgar Galungu, God say, forgive the people. Forgive people for what did the people do? What did the people of Zambia do to him? Edgar Galungu stole a lot of money. That one is, is guaranteed. No one is even you don't, if you go to Swaziland today, almost all the shopping malls, they are owned by Edgar Galungu. 
Edgar Lungu has a construction company in, Zam in, in Swaziland. That, the, the biggest construction company in Swaziland is owned by Edgar Lungu. How many billions did he, leave, he, he, he carry from Zambia and took outside the nation? The guy looted the country. That is guarantee. If there is anyone that should be asking for forgiveness, it's not the people of Zambia. Edgar Lungu should be the one asking for forgiveness. The problem is that any person that wear suit and say, praise the Lord, you believe. An idiot that prophesied that HH will never be the president. You still had the courage. You are a fool. Edgar Lungu also. You still had the courage to go out to his church and, and, and he tell you, forgive the nation. Who, who are you forgiving? You, need, you yourself, people need to forgive you because you, I don't want to fight today. Like I said, this, we are just starting. I'm just laying foundation. War doesn't start from the first day. I'm just laying foundation. I just want to help the opposition to sit up so that we start and start moving gradually, gradually. It's a gradual process. But I can guarantee you that this battle, you see this one, we have won it. I swear upon Godfather. You can come back to this broadcast and tell me if what I'm saying will not happen. I, I don't need even to talk about that. But let us proceed. So, you are supposed to allow a conviction, anoint a candidate. You can actually say, mm -mm, I'm anointing uh, uh, Brian Mundibile to come and take over. And secretly, you call your ministers, your top M, M, what, what members, committee members, say, they see, as you go for conviction, vote for Brian. Anyone you speak to, we definitely vote for your godson. And once that is done, PF will now have a president. And because you have a president and you are already strong on the ground, especially in the rural area, you will not start mobilizing. You yourself as, as a former president can actually pretend like you are not doing anything and be collecting your salary and be eating your thing. The problem is that, let me tell you this. The problem, somebody say you want to fight Lungu again. No, I'm not fighting Lungu again. I want to help him. The problem is that you don't learn. Ropia Abanda was your godfather, Edgar Lungu, but he was hiding. He didn't come out openly until the time of election. You can actually be a godfather to maybe, for example, Bowman Lusam, push him to be PF president. I'm giving an example. I'm not I'm, I'm not a Bowman Lusambo person, but I'm giving an example. But let one person come from PF. You'll be a godfather. If you become a godfather, all the benefits we are getting when you were a president, once you become a president, you'll be getting those benefits. In fact, more. It happened in the United States of America. Joe Biden was a nobody. People voted him because of Obama. Obama was a former president. But today, Obama is a political godfather. All the things that he wanted to implement when he was in power that uh, 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 Trump could not implement, the moment Biden took over power, those things were implemented. You could come back and become the president of Zambia, but a god president of Zambia. You decide what happens from within. But, unfortunately, what happened? You blew off everything because you are greedy. You are a greedy person. You wanted to come back and become a president. What are you going to achieve that you didn't achieve in seven years? What do you want, dear, that you did not achieve in seven years? Let me tell you this, what you don't know. When Satan died, you took over power out of sympathy. You didn't do politics. You are not a politician. You and the church, you are just the same. You are not a politician. You don't read anything. That's why I'm looking at church today. I'm laughing. Because my... 
uh, HH is not a politician, and those that call themselves his political advisor don't even know anything about politics. So Edgar Lungu is not a politician. You are not a politician. You are a lawyer. And then you came into politics and stayed many years. You didn't learn anything. If you were a politician, by now you are still going to be the president of Zambia. I'm telling you the gospel truth. If you were a politician, by now, you are still going to be the president of Zambia. But the problem, you are, you are, you are not a, a, a politician. You are a lawyer. So you brought in the mentality of lawyer, just like President Church has brought in business mentality, and we are seeing how things are going. I'm coming there any moment from today. Now, this is what's supposed to be done. Allow a confession. Even with your own money. You have money. You have a lot of money. You are, you are a billionaire. Out of your money, sponsor that candidate that you want. He comes in through PF. And PF may not win the election alone. Now, there is president member, the SP. There is Calabar. There are so many other opposition political parties. You come together. If you did that, by now, PF was going to be running. Mao Sampa was not going to hijack. Mao Sampa is, is a lunatic. Mao Sampa is a mad person. He's not taking PF anywhere. It's, you know, somebody who... Somebody who, uh, um, sorry, let me block this idiot. This is in my name to scam people. So, somebody who, who cannot even, since he became the PF president, he cannot go out and mobilize his party. He's afraid. He's always outside the country. You can see that it's a lunatic. Mao Zamba is not even an option. But whatever happened in PF, Edgar Lungu must be blamed. Edgar Lungu must be blamed. For somebody, a tout like Mao Zamba to come and hijack PF, it's because Edgar Lungu was greedy. He didn't want to do the right thing. He didn't want to allow convention. He wanted to come back and the rule. But unfortunately, that is not possible. He can never, never come back and rule. For him to rule, he must come back through another person. Now, people of Zambia, uh, the opposition parties in Zambia, still have one year in between to organize and come and do the right thing. For Eddie Galungu, my advice to you before I cut this broadcast, like I said, I just came to Lay Foundation. Before we proceed, the main broadcast is coming. I didn't announce. The main broadcast is done at night by, by 9 p.m. At that time, everybody's in their house waiting to hear. So this one, I just came to the office. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people here that I must attend to. But I've been looking at PFA, the Galungo opposition parties in Zambia. I've been looking at them. I feel pity for them because they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know who to run to. They don't know exactly the button to press. That's why I came to say, let me offer them my advice. For you people that are in PF, especially Edgar Lungu, you still have an opportunity. Number one, to step away from PF. PF is dead. With what has happened, I can assure you that PF is gone. You st while you still have support, register a new political party and not you registering it. Let somebody from a PF that has a good record register the new political party. Support that person. Speak to your ministers, those that are loyal to you. Secretly, let them support that political party. PF is gone. In 2025, when we are going to start the campaign properly, when you do it, you start mobilizing. 
once you register, maybe Mondebele registers it, a person that has a good record, a good track record, you register the party, start mobilizing it on the ground. You don't show yourself. All you can do is bring up finances to mobilize that party, to support that party. I'm telling you, it's easy. It's very, very easy. This is not what God can do for you. This is what intelligence and political intelligence will do for you. Once that party is released, PF. PF is dead. You can never get PF again. Leave it. From and the beside, PF already had a bad name. Register a political party. Call all the people that are loyal to you to start supporting that party. Start talking to people. In 2025, next year, when campaign will start, <laughs> pa, 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 pa. before you know it, what? it's a revolution. This day, with, with media, with social media, you don't need to work so hard for you to win an election. It's easy. Within eight months, you can organize a party and win an election. Very easy. So, register a party. Not with not your name appearing. You are now a godfather. That you must take it or leave it. You are now a political godfather. You can never be a president of Zambia again. But there is something bigger than being a president. It's called godfather. I myself, no matter how big I am, when I see the godfather, I bow. Godfather is the greatest authority. So if you become a political godfather, the person who is going to be the president is your son. Hey, my son, this company came here, give them contract. They will be given a contract. The same privilege you were enjoying when you were president, you will still enjoy it. And in 2025, merge that party with SP, Socialite Party. You come in agreement. I will come and advise you again. I will, I, will, I will come and help you. You match with SP. And leave the rest for us. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm so sorry that uh, many people, thousands of people, we are waiting for me to uh, come live and pray teach them about Africa, power, and so on and so forth. Especially those that are not watching from Zambia. You are disappointed because I'm talking politics today. You know, it's very important that I help also people politically, people that need help. Next week, we are going to continue with our African thing. But any moment from now, this week, I'm going to announce, we are going to start our live broadcast politics. But take this advice that I've given to you. If you are in Zambia, this is for your good. Even for the government. The government may say, see, I want has turn against us again. What? No, it's for your good. When there is strong opposition, you do well. <laughs> if there is nobody opposing you, if there is no one giving you advice, how are you going to do well? So take it also good on your side. Then from your side, you wake up. And do the right thing. People that fought for you are suffering. People that suffered for you, PND, are suffering. Let me tell you again and again. People that fought for you are suffering. Your own members, you PND members, are going through hell. You PND members are dying of hunger. Just your members, not to talk of the, the, the major population of Zambia. If you don't wake up, that's your own concern. I have nothing to lose. I've never lost anything before. And I will never lose. Even if you bring the entire government of the world to fight me, it will not succeed. You better take my advice and we progress. How can you tell me that in the year... 2020, 2021, Chishim Bakambu was dividing the nation of Zambia. Chishim Bakambu was planting the seed of division in Zambia. 
Chishimba Kamburi divided the country into two. Bembas against Tongas. Tongas against Bembas. Chishimba Kamburi acknowledged his mistake and went to Chief Monse and asked for forgiveness for dividing the nation. He was forgiven. Later, he continued. In fact, before the election, Chishimba Kamburi was a Satan. He was a Lucifer. He was an agent of destruction. He was the devil that, that it was, he was the devil himself. He was so bitter. His boys killed a lot of UPND guys. Chishimba Kamburi with Edith Nawaki and so on, kidnapped a family, set them up against a church. Now, few years down the line, because you have power, you think that you are wise. A church, you think now that you are almighty, you decide what happened. You, you wake up, you say, oh, I'm forgiving this person. Just because none of your family members, they didn't kill your children. They didn't kill your wife. You are intact. You wake up. You want to spend money, millions, to evacuate Chishimba Kambuil. Chishimba Kambuil, that is very rich. How many tracks that he, does he have? Is he the only sick person in Zambia? Go around the hospitals in Zambia. UPND supporters are littered in the hospital. They don't have money to buy medicine. Then, as a president, as a government, you want to take Chishimba Kambuil. The one that stood against the people, the one that divided the nation, the one that the one that destroyed the nation, you rise up today, you want to take him to go and kill him abroad at the expense of your people. Your people are suffering. Your people do not even have food. They don't even have what to eat. You, you go to all the UPND bloggers, you see that people are going through hell. Two years down the line, no UPND people are suffering. You abandon them. The man that boasted that he can have breakfast in Zambia and have dinner in New York is the one that you want to spend. What happened to you people when you take over power? It's like when you take over power, your brain disappears. Just like when somebody gives their life to Christ, they become fools. They don't reason, they don't reason again. You, they don't, they don't, the they, man of God will tell them anything and they believe. Man of God will say, give me your entire salary in January. You believe, you don't reason. You don't ask yourself, what is my children going to eat if I give you my entire salary? It's what happened when you take over that seat, you become fools. Look at a man that nearly set Zambia on fire. If you want to do something good for him, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a convict. You can pardon him. He has money. He can go and treat himself abroad. Why do you want to waste government money? A government that is struggling, a government that is limping, you still have money to go and take the Shembakambu outside the country. I, what is wrong? You provoke me intentionally. There are people, there are people two years down the line I don't want to go, I don't want to fight UPND. You can see that I'm diplomatic in what I'm doing. If I, if I go there, if I go there, UPND, it will take only about one month, it will collapse. People's eyes will open. I don't want to go there now. But how can you abandon the people that fought for your party? Your members. They can't even afford millimeter twice in a day. They don't eat. Many of them are, are languishing in the streets. You carry millions to go and take Chishemba Kambuil. To go and have treatment outside the country. Who is he? He's rich. He said he has tracks in Congo. That's why poor people, you're on your own. When I tell you to become rich, do everything possible to become rich. You think that, ah, see, one is forcing you. You want to seek first the kingdom of God and you want to die poor. My dear, if you are poor, there is no justice for you. Rich people don't care about you. Rich people don't, they, you don't exist. 
where they are. If not, tell me how can how can how can Chishimba Kambiri, who who claim to be rich, he drives the latest Lexus. He opened his mouth and said he has contracts running in Congo. Contracts are running in Congo for him. His children are abroad. His wife is abroad. He can afford any life that he wants. People are dying on the street. And the president wants to take money to go and send him abroad. At the expense of poor people. That money you want to spend on Chishim Bakambri, give it to your members. If you don't know, your members are suffering. How many times have you visited your secretariat? There is no food in your secretariat. Nobody go to your secretariat. Don't provoke me, please. I don't want to go. I don't. If, look, if you go there, you will never last. You cannot even finish your tenure. I swore upon God, Father. Don't do these things. People are suffering. What are you talking about? People are suffering. People are going through hell. And you want to send Tishim back and we're abroad for medication. Sylvia Masobo is a useless human being. She's a fool. I told you people, that woman. Please. Hey. <laughs> this thing that you want to start. Ask Eddie Galungu. Ask Eddie Galungu, ask Boma Lusambo. They will tell you that crossing the part of Sia One is the greatest mistake that you can make. We are going to. Please, don't go there. Don't go there. There are people that need help in Zambia. There are a lot of them. If you have a lot of money in the government, start taking care of your members. The other day, Lili Mutambo. Who contested, who wanted to contest on the UPND ticket, bought mill meal. I don't know if it's 10 bucks or 20 bucks, and took it to UPND secretariat. If you see the way the people there rushed the mill meal, I, I was looking at it. I said, Is these people are they cadres of the ruling party? Chishimba Kambu is supposed to be in prison as we speak today. But if you go to so many prisons today, you will see UPND cadres who are in prison for not doing anything. Many of them are still going to court for doing absolutely nothing. Please, let's not start this thing. I, I beg you in the name of God, Father, I still have a soft spot for you. When that spot goes, ask Eddie Along, he will tell you. You will know. Everywhere will be hot for you. I don't want to start that. Do the right thing. 